Hello YouTube, whoops, Mr. Evans here with my vlog number 118. Today is Friday and oh boy am I happy it's Friday, YouTube. Um, it has not been a particularly difficult or long week, but it has been a very tiring week. There's just a lot to always be thinking about, you know, um, when you're doing state testing. So that's done. Um, and next week it's, you know, back to business as usual. It's so funny because the students have kind of been complaining about this test all week, which is, is you know, it's fair, it's, it's difficult. But I know that when we go back to our regular schedule next week, they're gonna be upset about that too. Um, but it's okay, you know, because they, they'll get over it, it's okay. Um, especially if it's the kind of frustration that they know how to deal with, you know. Um, to check in about the day, today was, Although there were problems, it was darn near perfect. Um, because the problems that came up were pretty much small and easily quashed. Um, quashed? Squashed? I don't know, I think quashed is the thing. <laughs> so uh, it was, I was able to deal with them pretty well, and yeah, overall I'm just very happy with how today went. Um, Management-wise, uh, work-wise, uh, you know, there, there's more work for me to do now because I have to now catalog what every, every student has done and what work there is still left to do, but in general, um, good day. Uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, let me read the wonder quote of the day because uh, I think this applies a little bit to what I was uh, kind of thinking about today. Um, today's wonder quote is, a tree is known by its fruits, a man by his deeds. A good deed is never lost. He who sows courtesy reaps friendship, and he who plants kindness gathers love. It's by St. Basil. Um, now, <clears throat> the thing about that quote is, it's true. Reap what you sow, right? If you're kind, people will be kind to you in return, except we know pretty much from experience that, that it doesn't always work that way. If you're too kind, people may take advantage of you. But, you know, on the other side of things, if you're not kind, nobody will return that kindness. So it's about this sort of judicious application, right? Which is something that we really deal with a lot as teachers. Today I had to deal, um, with a real throwback. I had to kind of slip into a mode I haven't fully uh, slipped into in a, in a while, which is sort of what I consider to be hands-off classroom management. Um, there are so many ways to manage a classroom, so many ways. Um, and students like some and they don't like others and sometimes they, they uh, you know, students, it, it, but most of the time it's a combination of, right? Most of the time it's, you get students who they appreciate it, um, and then in another period, they all hate it. It's just, you know, it, there's so many factors that, that determine it. Um, and so there's, it, it's not easy which techniques you use, but I think the best, I don't want to say the best teachers, I think what I do, and I think what a lot of teachers who really want to um, keep their practice strong do, is they sort of have many of these strategies in their back pocket, right? And they know that there's a time when they gotta be the hammer and the time when they gotta be something else. They gotta hold the class together in a different way. Um, so when I say uh, hands-off classroom management, um, I'm not referring to I don't do anything and I just let chaos reign because that, especially during state testing, I would never do that. Um, but I think the biggest classroom management tip is know your students. And that sounds like a very basic thing, but I'm reminded of my first year of teaching. There's this one story that I haven't really told before um, that I, I, I would like it if I, if I could tell it a little bit more, which was I remember there was this one student who kept making noise. He was trying to like make his friends laugh, but you know, everyone was kind of talking, but he was just like over in the corner trying to make his friends laugh. And I was so frustrated. So after class, I just pulled him aside and I said to him, why were you making those noises in class today? He said, that wasn't me, I wasn't doing that. And my response to him was, we're not gonna talk about whether you, you were doing it because we both know that you were. What I'm asking you is why. We both know, that's a great line. I, I got to use it a different time with a student who, uh, he made some 
rude comment to another student, but it was one of those comments that like could be taken in a, in a positive way, but I knew, he, I, I knew he didn't mean it that way. He said, why? I said, I said we both know that's not why you said that. Those moments in my first year, which was full of chaos, felt like major wins for me. But the real secret is the students I did that with, the vast majority of my students that year would not even have come close to have working. Um, I knew that those students still cared about um, having a strong relationship with me and they still had respect for me. And so I knew that if I leaned into it hard enough, they would be willing to work with me. But many of my students, that wouldn't have worked. And that's the secret, right? And so when I say hands-off classroom management, there's one particular student I had to uh, use this with today, which, you know, that student may be watching, which if so, maybe you'll know that this is about you. But, you know, either way, um, I'm happy with how the situation turned out. Uh, and I, I think about several years back, um, I had to do this again. You know, there's these very extreme circumstances. I, I've been building up, and I haven't actually told you what it is, so I apologize for that. But basically, classroom, hands-on classroom management is when you see a certain behavior happening that shouldn't be happening, and you choose to not intervene. I use this at times when I know, or at least I'm fairly certain, that one, the behavior is not going to really cause any other problems. And two, that student knows that what they're doing is wrong and what they really want is negative attention from me. They want me to come in and punish them um, so that they can fight with me. Um, and so there are times, um, I, there was a more extreme example of this several years ago where uh, there was a student who just did not want to do their test. And they came in, I said, you need to sit down, you need to do your test. I don't want to do my test. And I was just like, oh. And so I just went and sat at my desk. <laughs> the students wandering around silently, not doing their test. Wouldn't really do this again today. I wouldn't tolerate it. But at that time, I was just like, you know what? I, I don't have the energy to deal with this. I will make it worse if I try to step in there because that student is trying to show that they don't respect my authority even though they actually do, they're trying to show that they don't. Um, and so I just ignored it. Sure enough, five, six minutes later, a student came up to my desk. Mr. Evans, can I, get, can I get a test? Absolutely, I handed it to the student and sat down, they did their test, they did very well. Um, I still use that in lighter forms, like if a student is not gonna do their test, I'm not doing this test. Um, and I might just say, okay, Here's a copy of the test if you change your mind and you decide you want an A. Um, and many times they, they won't do it, you know, but that behavior is not hurting anybody. Uh, and so today it was something that I had to practice, but I don't want to get specific. And I will say I'm very happy with how it turned out, um, which is, you know, kind of leads me back to that, uh, the, the quote, the wonder quote for the day. You reap what you sow, right? But you have to be judicious in your application of it. I can't just say, I really want you to succeed, and then the student will really want to succeed. It doesn't work that way. It's not that simple. There is a time and a place for everything. And even though um, I don't use this technique very often, today I could just kind of feel that this was what the situation needed. Um, so again, it's that sort of judicious application, right? I didn't step in and do what I wanted to do. I had to recognize what am I going to apply to this situation. So I suppose this is an example of reap what you sow, right? It's kind of like I'm going to stay out of this student's hair and then I'm going to trust that that student will stay out of my hair in return. But stay out of my hair isn't exactly the right term because you know then they actually do better, they actually do their work. But uh, I suppose another way of saying it would be I'm not going to give this student attention so that that student won't try to demand attention from me. That's, yeah, that's the best way to put it. So, um, yeah, just, it's really interesting the different ways that teaching strategies can show up. I don't know. And it was kind of interesting to see me have to dust out that technique after so many years. But there were several moments that made me smile today. 
So I'm excited to tell you about those two. One big one is um, an order came in uh, from Amazon that uh, I can't really tell you too much about, but it is for Anime Club. And yeah, I'm starting to build up the stuff that I'm going to eventually need. I actually get another thing in on, on, on Monday. I, I get a lot from Amazon. Amazon's a teacher's best friend. Nah, Dollar Tree's a teacher's best friend, but Amazon is a close second. Um, so that was kind of cool. It made me happy. It felt, made, made things feel very real, like I'm gonna use this. Can't be too specific, so we'll go ahead and move on. Another thing that really made me smile is I always try to keep uh, worksheets on hand. It just not exactly fun worksheets, but you know, like word searches, crossword puzzles, coloring pages, that kind of thing. Um, for students who finish their work early and they just need something to do. But a lot of times I think there's more of like a grudging, a grudging tolerance that it's like, I'm so bored. I say, here's a word search and they kind of go, ugh, well, it's better to do this than nothing. <laughs> the students today on the other hand were like actually asking for them. One of them actually was like, I want to finish my test so I can do that uh, search page. Um, that was a find the hidden object page. So I don't know, it's always really cool to see students do that. Kind of like when I described um, putting the, the fan in the window the other day. It's like, it's a very small thing, but showing appreciation means that the student is basically saying, you've done something right, Mr. Evans. Um, and so I, yeah, felt really good. Uh, and last thing is, I had to period sub today. Do not like period subbing. In fact, I feel like I have a whole anxiety trigger around it. As soon as I get that phone call, I freak out. A lot of times I stay anxious and upset, even if I don't end up having to do it. So when I got the call today, I was not happy. I tried to warm my way out of it, wasn't able to do it, had to period sub, and it went fine. It, went, it actually went a lot better than I expected. I was showing one student how to use the touch typing method. Um, always really, really, really cool um, when period seven goes well. Uh, and of course, you know, we get, we get paid at the, uh, I, I don't know if it's hourly or, I think it's the hourly rate, district's hourly rate. So, yeah, that was another moment that made me smile. And of course, final moment that's gonna make me smile is ending this vlog right now, because it is only 6.30 on a Friday! And I'm heading out! Friday is my usually very, very late night. So you uh, have a great rest of your night. Have a great weekend, YouTube, and I will see you again on Monday. And as always, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Bye-bye, YouTube.